After a lot of confusion about whether or not GarageBand for iOS was actually gonna get some kind of content drop over the last few days, that phantom app icon thing was either one of the greatest marketing moves ever or one of the biggest boo-boos. Apple have finally released not only a new sound pack, but an actual full proper update to the app. Let's dive in. Before we get stuck in, you need to be aware that in order to access these new features and the new sound pack, you need to have updated to the latest version of GarageBand, version 2.3.9. And in order to update to version 2.3.9, you'll need to be running iOS 14. The big issues that plagued iOS 14 at launch all seem to have been fixed, or most of them anyway, but if you don't want to update to iOS 14, and I know some of you do like to wait until all the wrinkles are ironed out of a new iOS release before updating, bear in mind that you will not have access to this new content. So if we take a look at GarageBand's App Store listing, we can go through what is new in this update. New audio recordings can be quickly started from the home screen by touching and holding the GarageBand app icon. Maximum song length at default tempo has been increased from 23 to 72 minutes. The ruler now offers an option to switch from musical bars and beats to minutes and seconds, and a new downloadable keyboard collection sound pack that includes over 150 keyboard loops and 50 instrument patches like pianos, organs, and electric pianos. Fantastic stuff, and great to see some long sought after features in there. Namely the increase in max song length and the ability to switch between bars and minutes and seconds. I know a couple of iOS podcasters that are going to find those changes really useful. Let's check this out then. If I click and hold on the GarageBand app icon in my dock, there are two new options here. Create a new audio recording and create a new live loop song. If I tap on create a new audio recording, GarageBand has a wee think to itself and opens right up in the audio recorder. Now that is killer. And this is a brand new audio recording, direct from my home screen. Pretty cool, huh? Tapping create a new live loop song just takes you to the live loops menu, so it's just saving you a little bit of time, but holy convenience, Batman, what a great addition. Song length has indeed been massively increased. As you can see, I can increase this section's length to 2,000 bars. I'm sure even Kyle would be pretty knackered after that. And you can toggle the time ruler on and off in the settings menu. Good stuff. Everything there is going to be genuinely useful to pretty much all users. Top marks Apple. So what about this new sound pack that was added, Keyboard Collection? Keyboards have always been a classic songwriting tool. This collection delivers a world-class set of pianos, organs, electric pianos, synths and more all expertly engineered to be instantly playable and inspirational. In addition to instruments, choose from a diverse set of over 150 software instrument loops. Use these in your song or edit and customize the individual notes and sounds in the loops to make them entirely your own. And this pack comes with 57 keyboard instruments and over 150 new Apple loops. Jackpot. So here's an idea of how some of these shiny new keyboards and loops sound.
So that's GarageBand version 2.3.9, a cracking update by all accounts. Let's just hope it doesn't take Apple another year to add another update to GarageBand. If this update has whetted your appetite for all things GarageBand for iOS, then give this playlist a click. It'll take you to a selection of some of the best GarageBand for iOS videos the GarageBand Guide has to offer. Take care of yourself. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.